So let's take a look at a couple of new interface features on this first lesson. Uh, we're going to focus on uh, what kind of interface features have been added and how that might impact your workflow. So for starters, whenever we open up Grasshopper, we're going to now see a series of green or red boxes along the bottom of the Grasshopper canvas. And this shows us our uh, recent file list. So we can jump right back onto a file that we were working on uh, when we closed Grasshopper the last time or whenever we closed our last definition. Also, there are a lot of new options that are available through the Grasshopper Preferences window. And this is a pop-up that can be found here under File Preferences. And the majority of these options are also found elsewhere within the menus, but this is where they all kind of come together into one spot so that you can uh, affect them all individually. We're also going to take a look at how um, Grasshopper now has load protection. This is something that um, some of you advanced users that are maybe using a lot of add-ons for Grasshopper might want to pay attention to. Uh, this is a way for us to um, require a approval whenever we start Grasshopper for that plugin to load. And then lastly, we're also going to take a look at how the interface has become a little bit more dynamic. Um, it resizes uh, according to the size of the Grasshopper window so that the uh, panel menus here will shift in their length as well as uh, potentially shift over to an icon view instead of, instead of text. And some of those ribbon options are also found under that same preferences window that we were looking at a second ago. And then we're also going to take a look at how we can customize the objects themselves that are found in Grasshopper um, once they're on the canvas in terms of how we see them and how we begin to use them. Um, so we can add uh, the full names to the, op the objects as well as assign the default colors whenever they're selected, when they're uh, successfully computing, or whether or not there's a warning. And this is also an option through the, the preferences window. So let's go ahead and bounce into Grasshopper and take a look at a few of those things. All right, so here's my Grasshopper window. Again, I'm using Grasshopper version 961. And when I open Grasshopper without any files open, it allows me to have this uh, dynamic view down here at the bottom. These are my recent files. These are the lessons we're actually going to be looking at. Uh, we also uh, took a look in the uh, slides there at the preferences, which is really the kind of home for the majority of the customization within the settings for the interface, both how we see the uh, navigation up here through the, um, the panels and uh, what's called the ribbon, as well as how we see objects once they're on the canvas. So if you click through here, um, you can see that there's an author setting, which is really great to uh, put your information in, uh, your personal information in, in case um, you're sharing files across uh, the office or um, with a client, um, so they can get back in touch with you. You can keep track of your files a little bit better. Additionally, as you kind of uh, click through here, uh, I'm going to focus on these few down here, the interface options, which allows us to um, customize how things look, um, specifically in the interface and the ribbons. So here's that option I was mentioning before about showing the tab icons instead of uh, text, and that can be found here. And there's some other options if you want to see more of the objects these are what are called the obscure components that are maybe less used. Um, they're typically hidden in this uh, view unless you click this box. And as I was saying before, um, the interface options have become uh, pretty robust at this point. Um, a lot of what you can do here within this one preferences window can also be done elsewhere. For instance, if I were to right click on the ribbons up here, I can say display as icons. So just kind of a quick option as well as all of those options located um, consistently within the entire preferences window. So I think I'm going to leave it with the uh, text because I prefer it that way. And let's take a look at the palette options next. So this is um, the preview for how your objects are going to look when you drop them onto the canvas. So I'm going to drop a few um, random objects on here. Um, I'm not planning on connecting these together. But I do want to see what's going to happen if I say have one selected or um, this one is currently working. It's got all the information it needs to compute. And that would allow me in here to say, okay, well, when my objects are um, not working, there's a warning. 
I'm going to go ahead and change the fill and I get an update here, right? Um, I could also do the, the text. I could change it to white. So it inverts the text there um, that would be located here on the object. And then last, I want to take a look at this option here under the viewport um, button. Here, these are the materials and the, how the preview looks, not in Grasshopper, but in Rhino. So if I take a look here in Rhino and um, I make, let's say, a simple object like a circle. By default in Rhino, it's going to be red when it's unselected and green when it is selected to kind of mimic the preview here. Um, instead, if I were in the preferences options there, we could go ahead and say that we want the normal state for the materials to be something else. Maybe I want it to be more of a gray, a dark gray. So I'm going to set that here under my uh, document materials as well. There we go. And now I have a kind of customized version of what I see in my Rhino viewport.